This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culturist PlayStation podcast with the 40 years of playing PlayStation and 10 plus years in that game's media combined. I'd like to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning mm-hmm. at uh, 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time on the YouTubes, 8 a.m. on your podcast services of choice. And you can now join us live as we record every Saturday at 4 p.m. That's correct. So previously, the next thing I would say would be, if you join us, on, you can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash thepopculture. Support us at any tier. You used to be able to get a little sneaky link where you can watch us record this show live. That's not happening anymore. That shit has been pulled. It is now available to everybody. So that's Saturday afternoons, 4 p.m. You can watch us record the show live, and then we'll go up on the, uh, on the, the regular YouTubes and your podcast services on the Monday so when you're listening to the conversation here you can join that conversation here live on the Saturday but as well as facebook.com slash groups slash the pop culturist uh, Twitter Instagram Discord all those places links in the description below if you want to support us in a more one soft fashion head over to uh, uh, popculture.com slash shop we can buy shirts and other sort of shit with our logos on it. And as we mentioned, we are on Twitch, twitch.tv slash thepopculturist. Uh, every Thursday, we do our game streams, 8 p.m. Let's get, so let's get some housekeeping out of the way, Max. <laughs> it's Max! What's going on, everyone? So, uh, look, we're having a discussion. There is a, a video up on the YouTube channel now about 2020 updates. Uh, uh, Josh Saunders, uh, the, the regular chair here he has stepped away from for the players for the uh, essentially the unforeseen future a couple of things have come up in his in his life in his family um and that is requiring more of his time at this point uh he is not gone from the pop sea however he may appear later in the year we do he and i have uh, an idea in mind uh, a cool little little show that we might do um not using the same distance thing that we do with gem so that could be a bit of fun. So he can do it from his home and I can do it from here. Have a, a bit. So this is the time that we formally announce on video, on the episode, that Max Cooper, this man right here, is now the co-host of For The Players, the pop culture's PlayStation podcast. One man clap for Max. <laughs> pulled you. You, you. pulled yourself, you piece <laughs> of shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> give myself a medal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So welcome, <clears throat> welcome. Because you so you did fill in for a little bit of time at last year, and yep. you've dropped in here and there, and especially with streams, you're always here, which is o- awesome. But now, yeah, you're here. You're officially part of the show. Yeah, it feels nice to finally be able to beat Paul James's record. Yeah, fuck that, Paul James. In a butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, looking forward to it. Excited, so the because so this is the best year to, to jump on board. Yeah, this is with uh, PlayStation Five, mm-hmm. It's gonna, mm-hmm. It's gonna, mm-hmm. new gen, everything. It's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. I'm feeling it. I'm getting excited. Whenever uh, I think about PS Five, I just got like a tingly feeling. Like it's not like a, a like a butterfly is like a scared. <laughs> it's like when you you know you just like look at something look at something from a distance it's it's like no nah, it's this it's the slow run across across the airport terminal when when someone steps off the plane and you haven't seen them for ages and you're like yeah embrace me and you're yeah. just running in slow-mo with that, yeah, that's that the, sappy love song yeah i'm gonna pick background. up that ps5 whatever fucking shape it is and be, oh, 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 oh. like at the airport that's like that's my plan well, the butterfly's anticipation says, Jess. The first picture, you'll be simbering the... <laughs> <laughs> you'll be standing up on top of your rock outside with the PlayStation. Speaking of, like, <laughs> simbering small things, so since you've last been on the show, you've brought in a small person that you can simber. Well, you didn't. You were there. I was there. Your wife did. I helped. I scratched her nose while she couldn't move. <laughs> Yeah, so we we had a, uh, a lovely little baby girl on the 23rd of December. Congratulations. Thank you. I did a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Yeah. I got to sit in a chair. Yeah, how useless do you feel? <laughs> Super useless. It's the worst. It's like all Super this stuff's useless. going on over there. And like, especially with Millie, like Millie was in pain. I'm like, ah, it's, 
See, Ali was good because it was because it was a planned Caesar, so everything oh, kind of yeah. went to plan. It, like literally everything went to plan. It was so good, and um, yeah, I just got to I just got to hold her while she got all her blood tests done and all her needles and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. So I got to like bath James and stuff because Millie had then had to be rushed to surgery because he hip and shouldered his way out. So, so she was off, and I'm like, like hey, you want to do some stuff? I'm like, yeah, all right, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll do some stuff. I'll do better but- things. Oh, I'll be I'll be dead. <clears throat> That's good fun, man. How are you finding it? Because you're on pat leave as well. Yeah, so I'm back at work on Monday after four weeks off. Mm-hmm. So it's been it's been really good. It's been super fun. Wish I had a little bit more time off. Yeah. But I mean, I don't. I shouldn't complain too much. I don't work. <clears throat> I don't work long hours, so it's not too bad. And yeah. they're generally in the middle of the night. So. Yeah. Well, we can we can transition that into because like when I was on my pat leave. I had all these grandiose plans. I'm like, I'm going to play all these fucking games. I'm going to do all this stuff. Didn't do any of it. <laughs> what have you been playing? What have I been playing? So, uh, we've dived back into GTA 5 pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, we took a break over the <coughs> over the Christmas period because it snows and the snow is just the worst. But fucking it. Ah, it, oh, so frustrating. And then I also binge watched Netflix's The Witcher, which forced me to re-download it on two separate consoles and play it simultaneously. So I'm getting nowhere. <laughs> With The Witcher, like uh, the reason that I stepped away from it is because I looked at it and I was like, "This this bitch is dense. Like there is so much in this game. Like it it hurt me to look at." And you're like, oh, "I'm gonna look at it twice." <laughs> and the problem is because you may get a little bit further on your Xbox, and then you go play on your PS4. Like I've done all this. I oh, know it's the other well, one. Well, that's well, that's exactly what Ali's <clears throat> been saying. Because I because I played on the like, <coughs> Xbox in the lounge room when we're all sitting together in the family room. Mm. When I move up to the study where my PlayStation is, my wife will come in and be like, "Have you already done this?" I'm like, "Yeah, but I could do it again because it's you know." Well, this is PS4 girl drop. <laughs> whatever his fucking name. Is. <laughs> PS4 girl does not look as good because I have a peasant PS4. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit that um, it's it's been good. What about yourself? How uh, have you enjoyed your Christmas break? I I've had the <clears throat> so I didn't I was able to get two more credits before the end of the year. Ooh. So I did finish on eighteen, look at which you. is awesome. Look, those so fucking easy credits. <laughs> like I got Goose Game, so I finished Goose Game. Cause that game's like three hours. Um, I'm at like seventy five percent of the trophies as well. Oh, nice. All I have left is the <clears throat> four timed ones which is like do everything before the bell rings or whatever. So I'm just trying to work out the best you routing the your best path, route yeah. to do that. And because my kid's a bum and I love him, but he also loves duck game because he doesn't, he doesn't know the difference. So for him, it's duck game. So he'll come in and be like, Oh, you're playing duck game. Can I play hide and seek in the garden? So he takes the controller and then goes and hides in the garden and then proceeds to annoy the gardener. <laughs> and then he's like, can we see the boy? So then we go into the other side <laughs> And then we see the boy with the glasses and we fuck with him for a while. And he's like, can we see other granddad? Because like, he's he refers to the, the, the old man in the garden as granddad because gra- his granddad's always in the garden. So I thought it'd be fun. To, to, a way to get him to, to connect to the game. So we see other granddad who's this other old dude. You know, the one that's like next to the, uh, you know, the two little houses. So we go and then we fuck with him for a while. And then we like, can we go to, can we go to first granddad? So we have to hike back. He doesn't know how to hike. He just likes to dick around. So I've, I've got to hike back. Yeah. We're going, yeah. So it's all fun. So I'm trying to work out the patterns on how to get those last couple of trophies because it was fun clearing it out. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, doing all the alternate ways of, of stuff was, was pretty fun. The other one was Tools Up. Um, uh, this one doesn't really... It, I didn't. I haven't finished... Like, I've finished the game. I've done all 30 levels. I've completed all 30 levels, but I haven't three-starred them yet. And, like, there's obviously a trophy connected to that too. But for me, it was just stepping my way through. Get duh, 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 and then I'll need some... I'll need... I need some help here. Like, the, like I may <clears> have <throat> to call you in to help me clear out the stars. I mean, if we get stuck, that's all we can yeah. stream. Well, yeah, that's a stream right there. We just, you know, we'll try to get those last stars. There's a party mode as well. It's all about clearing out in time limits. And there's a trophy connected to that as well. So maybe we can clear the party mode one day. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, this, if we don't get Kakarot, we might do that this week. Yeah, that sounds Boom, good. Boom, there it is. Um, yeah, so I've cleared that. Well, that game is dope. It's so good, man. Like, it's fun. And it's so single player. Compared to, like, Overcooked, where it felt overwhelming instantly by yourself. <clears> and it, yeah. it makes the game, like, horrifying. Because the anxiety is like, this game does deliver an anxiety, but it's different. 
Yeah. It's a different... Because it's, it's more about getting stuff done rather than being pounded into the ground. Where overcooked sometimes can feel like it's pounding you into the ground. Which I guess is by design. It's what it wants to do. Um, but yeah, the tools up is cool. As I did the, pretty much the whole thing single player. But now it's just those last couple of things to really to, to get it done. Um, other than that, I've been, I've been playing GTA V. I started playing it like by myself. And you're like, oh, I'm playing it. I'm like, oh, sweet. So I came and did a couple of the, the casino heists with you. Made a bunch of coin and fucking legged it. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've just been piddling around, <laughs> having a bit, a bit of fun there uh, with GTA. So I've, uh, I've now, I've picked it up on PC Ooh. and uh, hopefully Craig has as well. So Craig, a good friend of the show, Craig from the Malt Show, he's wanting to do more uh, additional streams uh, outside of his radio show. And I'm like, look, I'm having a killer time with, with GTA and like the opportunities are the endless there, right? What we could do. He's like, let's get it on PC and let's try one of those Twitch roleplay groups. You know, like those servers where it's all you play as policemen or a shop owner or an ambulance person. Like, I'm paramedic is the word I wanted. <laughs> ambulance. Because my, my brain's like, uh, ambulance person. <laughs> um, so the idea is, I think he and I are going to do like a buddy cop thing. Like, we'll be on the same server and we'll work together as a team, like a, a partners and, cr- you know, as a policeman. I think that'd be a laugh. Like we'll play our roles. We'll, you know, I might, I'll, probably, I'll buy a policeman hat and I'll, when we stream, I'll do it in here. And I don't know. It seems the like right amount of dumb. And it plays beautifully on my computer. I thought that game would be demanding as hell, but it totally isn't. I can play it on that laptop. Yeah. <clears throat> and oh, well. That's good. Um, I, I jumped into Unravel for a little bit as well. It's yep. an old um, a old platformer game with the little uh, knit dude. Mostly because I was sitting at my console and I was one play like mindless. I'm like, uh, I scrolled through my list and I found, I was like, cool, I think I can get credits on that this year. Let's give that a bill. I actually think, oh, and I did get credits for this year. I already have a credits. Totally fucking forgot. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I finished the campaign. Man, was that unimpressive. Really? You didn't like it? <clears throat> the issue that I have with this <clears throat> campaign... It's very confronting. I like the confronting. Mm. But I, I have a feeling that, that they they set up a lot of these really cool ideas that did have confronting or potential to be something, but I've never felt it stuck the landing. Yeah, I can agree with that. So, like, it's like, oh, you get to play as the girl, and you're in the... I'm like, okay. And then it gets, you know, and then it gets instantly gamified, and then it doesn't quite seem to stick. Well, I okay. So, full disclosure: I never finished the co- the, yeah, the, right. the entire <clears throat> campaign. I played it when it first came out, and what I think I got to like the fourth or fifth mission. But th- that mission where you're infiltrating the house, which was fairly early on, and you're shooting women, which you normally cannot do in any Call of Duty game. Yeah. They normally come up with big green tags. It's like no friendly fire. And you, I was just you, like, there's I was two like, or three of those missions. I was just like, whoa, that's that's a bit, dude. Those missions are unquestionably the best part. <laughs> <laughs> not shooting the, not shooting, yeah. but I mean, like, if you, if, <clears throat> with what they're wanting to tell you and what they're wanting to say, like, that, those missions are the yeah. best. Because you essentially are going in there, it's who's a threat, who isn't, there's a woman, you know, it sounds horrible, but like, there's a woman, like, is she a threat? And pulls out an assault rifle, and like, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, and there's, and there's, hard, you know, people huddling with their kids that aren't, you know, yeah. uh, aggressive. It's intense mission, man. I mean, I can definitely <clears throat> see why they won and deservedly so the the sound design award like the the sound design in that in that campaign yeah. in yeah, some of those set pieces in some of the set pieces is just phenomenal you look I'll, I'll admit I couldn't I can't confirm that <laughs> I played on almost low volume with podcasts I, I, I had headset on nah. surround sound like it was it was good I didn't I was like I'm gonna chip through this I'm just, like I don't need to give a fuck at the story the story like once I realised the story means almost nothing yeah. I was like alright turn that down turn yeah. the podcast up I'm just gonna chill through I'm just gonna push my way through yeah um, and that's kind of what I, what I did but no I enjoyed it so my plan though because although we've got you know games coming out the bum hole for the next like, couple of couple of months I'm thinking I, I want to get Horizon done. Oh, that's my goal. Ooh. That's my goal for the, for the, for this year already. Full full Horizon or just? Um, I think I think ga- I think the base game for now, and then we'll see what happens with Frozen Wilds. Yeah, because I think I can get it done. I still haven't played Frozen Wilds. So yeah, it'd be like I, I to go back to it. if because apparently the platinum you can get most of it as you go. So that part's got my attention. Um, but that's going to be my game to aim for until like Last of Us and stuff come out because it's relatively quiet between now and March. Yeah, 
but then March is going to like pound my face in. So if I can get this done before March, that's kind of my, my goal. It's going to be so gross. March to like May is just... Mm. The end of Feb till May is just going to be horrible. Yeah. I just don't have the hours in the day, I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, well, especially now that you're the little one, you're going to understand the difficulties of balancing that and, like, trying to have it all come together. Also, we got a, got a follow from Bicepticon. Ah, uh, thank you, Bicepticon, for the, the follow there. It is so much fun. It I is agree. so much fun. Dude, I put, like, 25, 30 hours into it upon release. The main issue with Horizon is if you stop, it is so hard to pick that game back up and yes! you have to start again. That is where I'm at right now. I'm like, <laughs> I'm 30 hours in. I could finish it. Right now, I could finish it. But I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> The well, second I, I face <laughs> the second I face anything that isn't a watcher, I am fucked. Period. So I'm like, well, I guess I might as well just start again. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's where I'm thinking. Uh, Craig from the Mullet Show jumps in as well, and he's resub for 22 months. Thank you. Oh, yeah, uh, all our resub 22 months and nothing. Where's the damn love? There's your love, Craig. Thank you very much, Craig. I that's the one thing we have to account on. Now that we're streaming this live on Twitch, there will be some Twitchy things that happen. And I'm sorry if that breaks the immersion for those that the regular podcast listeners. But I'm actually really looking forward to this body cop idea. Yeah. This Twitch RP. Yeah, it's going to be awesome fun. I think the potential there is really cool. Because, like, Craig plays characters as well. And I'll, 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 have to, I'll bounce off him and I think we'll nail it. But, um, yeah. <laughs> well, let's jump into the next section of the show we call Inform the Players, where we tell you about what happened this week in uh, PlayStation. Uh, now, what I have done is I, I've collated the news, but uh, Max will take over the, the role of Josh and be the news reader. Um, I've collated a bunch of things that have happened in the last week, as well as key pickings of what happened for, uh, when, we, when we wrapped up in December. So, uh, Max, all right, let's take kick it off. Let's kick it off. So first up, we have some controller news. So as everyone knows, we've got we're finally getting the uh, the back button attachment for our mm. DualShocks. Yes, in December they announced, uh, yeah, this this thing that plugs into that obscure auxiliary <laughs> plug at the bottom. <laughs> uh, you plug it into that, and it gives you two buttons at the back and a little OLED screen that Cause, presumably cause, will fuck your battery because our batteries don't last long enough as it is. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a demand for controllers with back pedal back, back paddles sorry not back pedals um and we're getting it on february the 14th so nothing says valentine's like a fucking back paddles of your controller <laughs> is all i'm saying like happy birthday wife uh, happy, happy birthday well happy valentine's day wife here is back for, she's like i don't know what this is i so might obviously think I, I knew you'd that, hate it <laughs> so obviously it allows the two panels can be uh button mapped to i believe any it's pretty much any anything button. from what i heard i did Apart from your like start, share, and probably touchpad button, yeah. I would imagine. Um, so I'll, look, I'm going to pick this up. If not, I'm going to talk to PlayStation either. Because <laughs> like I need to test, I need to the, test this out. I don't know. What does the OLED screen actually display? Does it just display what each yeah, paddle it, it is? It shows the PlayStation so like a circle and a cross. If that's what they are, yeah. I mean, cool. I guess OLEDs <laughs> drain battery, <laughs> and you know what? It's you know what? It, you know what it's showing your lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. What are like? It visually it looks cool. However, what is the benefit? What is the like? I guess like doing that because that the one problem that you that because uh, I right now I'm reviewing the uh, Thrustmaster E Swap and I uh, Pro controller and I've also uh, previously done the Razer Raiju controller. The issue that you have is you forget because you don't you, you know, you've got the four buttons at the back like oh fuck what was what. Well, say so I have a scuff, and that also has four mm. paddles at the back. Mm. And the first thing I did is remove two of them because four is way too much. Yep. My hands are tiny. I can't actually reach both <laughs> paddles if they're both in, yeah. and they're always the same button. Yeah, always the same. So button. X, I have like the ones I really care for the most. Is I have X's on the right hand side and circles on the left. I believe I have X and R three. R three? Why R three? Ah, because it's like it's stabby or crouch, yeah. depending on how I'm playing my first person shooters. Because like I like to be able to jump, <clears throat> knife, and aim all simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is, like, I map them. Very rarely do I use them. So look, is, we'll give it a go because we you know PlayStation Show is within our best interest to check it out. So I'll jump. Well, I'll, I'll bite that bullet. It's what, it's what fifty bucks. Yeah, forty nine ninety five retail. Ooh. Uh, look, it's better than paying three hundo for a control. All right, I, I agree. And the Dual Shock's not bad. It just it will all depend on how quickly it drains your battery. Yeah, um, I'm expecting to be bum. <laughs> to be so <laughs> bum. Uh, we also have a new pattern for an updated Dual Shock with back buttons built in. Now the thing about this pattern 
is because if you look at because from the previous patterns we've seen from the what is the, presumably the dual shock fine <laughs> like <laughs> spike setting is so buff <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's how i talk <laughs> yeah it does it does look more of a ps4 controller a yeah dual shock 4 controller over the new what we've seen to be the dual shock yeah so 4. from the patterns we've seen of what presumably is the ps5 controller there's no light bar there the it's a USB C plug good yeah which is great good. um the difference here in this pattern is it's got a light bar it's got micro usb so it's presumably an updated ps4 controller cool weird to announce it now or even patent it but then the pattern could have been like <laughs> fucking yonks back <laughs> and they're like well rather it's than only just come to light yeah well then rather than like well how how are we going to convince people to pay you know, a hundred and because what? How much is a controller here in Australia? Like ninety nine, ninety bucks. Yeah. Like, how can we convince people to pay one hundred fifty bucks? Like, well, what if we just sell them the dongle for fifty? Fifty seems less. Like, <laughs> bam, <laughs> man. If they put new batteries in it that lasted longer, I'd totally pay one hundred fifty bucks for a controller. It's pretty lasted. easy. Like, I presume it's easier to replace them. Probably because, like, I've because uh, I've pulled apart the controller before. Mm. Not that one. So we've got the cool. Uh, it's right behind Max's shoulder. If you can. Sh- uh, other way that way there you go so there's a nice uh, God of War themed custom controller over there that our good friends over at Tag Mods uh, Ethan <clears> and the boys did um, we had them come to my workplace and we did it we put, yep. we put on the Hydro dipped a bunch of controllers so it's really easy to get inside and like it's not too complicated in there yep. so I'm sure if you got the right things and you knew what you were doing you could probably put a higher capacity battery in there difficulty is you'd have to have it in the same size and whatnot. but that breaks warranties and shit where the fuck am I going with this <laughs> I don't know Either way, I think this may have been a patent prior to, um, like, prior to the idea of the attachment. Yeah. And, like, well, because I think that is a smarter option. It's it's less to produce because it's less, physically less device. Yeah, then they would also not have to run two lines of controllers because, pardon me, not everyone will want back paddles. Yep. And not everyone will want to spend 150 bucks on a controller. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bicepticons we- says uh, hasn't it got a wider design I'm getting the clipping paddles <laughs> what the Jewish, the Jewish I think it, it looks chunky but we'll yeah. get into that right now yeah so we yeah we also had the uh, the DualShock Five photo leak thanks to the cleaner. This is the best thing. I don't know what the, I don't know where this guy works, but the 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 blow up on the internet is like some cleaner who I presume is now unemployed uh, posted photos of the dev kit that we've all all we've seen, all, seen the we've dev all kit, made yep. fun of. The thing's fucking hideous, and some really good shots of the controller. So it's definitely a lot chunkier. It's a thicker build around the thumbsticks, and no illumination from the light bar can be seen. Well, because you can you can see that it's plugged in, and there's no color on the um on, on the cord. So I presume there's you can presume there's no light bar, or you can turn that fucker off. Ooh, that'd be nice. Uh, in the chat, Decepticon says, uh, oh no, sorry, Jess in the chat says it was an Ubisoft cleaner. I think I must admit, I I actually really like the light bar, especially when I'm playing GTA. I'm sitting in a dark room, and then all of a sudden it's just blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. I like it when it indicates like, health. Like, I think I was playing Resident Evil 2. Yeah. And it's like, you know, because green, red, yeah, green, yeah. Uh, yellow, and red, and like the color change depending on your health, that was really cool. Because, like, oh, what health am I? And just look down. But then you look up the screen, and then fucking Mr. X punches you in the face. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a tough call. Um, the design is very similar to like the 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 Razer Raiju in terms of its thickness. Yeah, it's not quite as thick because that's a big, beefy, almost old Xboxy style one. Um, I don't mind it because as, as I said, right now I'm using the Thrustmaster review coming next week, mm. <clears throat> um, and it is bigger. Yeah, well, so I'm using a scuff controller, which is more akin to an Xbox controller. Then. Yeah. Like used to middle 360. So they've, it's it's slightly wider in the in the in the hand grips, which is really helpful. Mm. And bringing back the Duke, the the Duke there is, is Duke. back. You, you can, can buy a Duke right now. now. Yeah. Um, the one thing I love about the Thrustmaster, the Duke is was a stupid controller. I'm just gonna throw it out. <laughs> so poorly designed. It's got um slightly longer so handy gross. parts. You know the parts that sit in your wrist. Oh, yeah. Uh, I keep calling yeah, them yeah. wings, but they're not called wings. So this looks to be the same almost shape or, or size, but with a bit more grunt in the middle. Yeah. Which is probably the major difference, which the only concern with with that is if they, they don't extend the little hand wristy parts, like where do you crank your fingers? <laughs> that matter because there's fucking buttons on the back, possibly. Just saying. Uh, in other news, we had CES this week. What a fucking waste of time so CES was. I got super hyped because Sony were all like, you know, the future is coming. I'm like, are they going to, 
this is it. We're going to get the PS5 announced at CES. <clears throat> After Microsoft did theirs at the Game Game Awards last year, I'm like, CES, what a great place to do it. We got a bloody logo. <laughs> I was so disappointed. It's a nice looking logo. They haven't really changed much. Pretty sure they just deleted the four, put the five in. Okay, so what they've done is, it's, it's, so it's the, <laughs> when they did the super slim PS3 or the slim PS3, I don't know, turn there, I should have a look. Um, they did that, they, they changed the font. Yeah. And since then, they just went, four yeah. and there's when <laughs> five which is cool because like it shows consistency yeah which is nice so it makes you all look i think they maybe actually said that in interview it's like uh, it, it all looks like it's under the one umbrella it's removing the confusion of the xbox x the xbox x series x keeping it simple yeah it's very very it's it's a nice design it's very good it, it wasn't what I wanted. I was super hoping for some more information, but they did drop some hardware features. Before we, before we jump into that, though, because one of the things that, like, with the with the logo, right, we're sitting here bitching about the logo being the same thing. Yeah. If someone was, asked me what you wanted that logo to be instead, I don't have an answer. No, I, I agree. I, I also don't. I mean, it, it's exactly what it's meant to do. It has, it has PS on it, and the number five. <laughs> they like, kind of nailed it, right? Yeah. And it's not the Spider-Man font anymore, which is cool. <laughs> I mean, it also was the most popular Instagram image ever posted by a games company, so they're obviously doing something right. Yeah, but that, when, <laughs> this is that line of like, is good pre- is is all press good press? Like Kevin's like this ball bags, but everyone shared it. This is the most shared ball bags on the internet. Yeah, I just, don't quote me on that. <laughs> don't quote me on that. But yeah, obviously they apart from the logo, they did drop some hardware feature designs or hardware features I should say for the upcoming console so we now have 3D audio sound built in Mm -hmm. which is awesome we have they they confirmed the haptics and adaptive triggers in the new controllers so they they likened it to uh, Aloy bowstring so the 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 more you pull the trigger in the harder it gives Mm -hmm. you gives you feedback so it feels it gives you more uh, what's the word I'm looking for vibration no uh, immersiveness in what you're doing yeah, because nothing says it's vibration. No, <laughs> like, what, where do you what where do you want to? It's not vibration. Immersiveness <laughs> is what I was going for, guys. Uh, they they reiterated on their ultra high speed SSD. Yeah, which obviously we've seen a lot of patterns around that. There it looks like there could be removable ones that can slide in and out as as they want, which is cool. Hardware based ray tracing, which is really exciting because it means that you know it's going to be a powerful box. Yeah good it's expensive and then we it plays ultra hd blu-rays awesome yeah why well, don't the, the pro do the that the pro should have done that <laughs> see the, the the difficulty here is they aside from the logo almost nothing new was announced here about the ps5 like all this information that we're reading is everything we've known about like so we've known about the triggers we've known about the 3d the 3d audio is cool they did that in ps4 with some games i think uncharted had it yeah which is very very cool um like but the, it's it's nice that it's now on a hardware level over well, yeah, on a, H- rather than a game by game basis, yeah. like that is certainly an, imp- an, imp- an, imp- an improvement is what I wanted there. Um, SSD, we already knew about uh, ray tracing because they've said ray tracing prior, but they never specified whether it's software or hardware level. So having it on a hardware level is awesome because they're not tricking the game to having ray tracing. Yeah. Like it ideally should have it. Uh, Trade your in the chat says, "Hey guys, hijack the TV off Bianca to watch you guys." Boom! Hey Blair, hey Bianca, congratulations on uh, engagements and things. It's, they would have such meetings on it, yeah. Uh, they also dropped some amazing PS4 stat numbers. So we have 106 million PS4s sold. Yeah, they really pulled their dick out on this, on this oh, slide, yeah, didn't they? Oh, yeah. 115 billion PS4 games sold. Not exclusives. Obviously, that's any game on PS4. Yeah. 5 million PSVR units sold, which is awesome, because hopefully it means that they're going to you know show it some love. It's a donkeyously small percentage of total PS4s, but that's pretty it good. It is. I think it's still the best-selling VR period. 103 million monthly active users. Hey, so I am one of them. So, so we're missing 3 million people from <laughs> who purchased a PS4 that's not using it. Yeah, hey, what are they doing? <laughs> we've got 38.8 million PS Plus subscribers, which is... Interesting, seems, interesting it seems percentage. like a really low number for it how does. many active monthly users <laughs> they have. And Apparently knowing that you have to use much. PS4, uh, you have to use uh, Plus to be able to like... Play online. Play online, and there's also the discounts that come with it, and the online story. Like, I guess the online storage is an example of something that probably the average person doesn't give a fuck about. But I don't use it. 
I use that cloud storage all the time because with benefit of work, um, for those who don't know, uh, my day job, I work within games. I uh, use games as therapy for, for for youth and young adults with ASD, mental health challenges, disabilities and whatnot, right? So if like the handy for me, because I can take my my saves to work. So if I'm, play, if I'm playing a game with like tools up, as an example, I'm like, I bring the game in so everyone can sort of see the other end of the levels yeah. and that sort of stuff. Um, so I, yeah, he's like, but... That's, that is a small percentage. It's a yeah, good percentage. It, it, it's it a small is, percentage. Yeah, it is a yeah. It's a surprising percentage, I must admit. On top of that, though, it is incredibly impressive that if there's 106 million PS4s out there, 103 million people on a month, or have 100, 106, yeah. 103. Uh, yeah, that is a right. lot of people that are still using their PS4. It'll be interesting to see if it's it's if it's people using their PS4 to play games or just to use it to or have it on watch movies. Well, I guess or... it's monthly users of the console. That would make sense, right? Just yeah. sort of have as many people on it. Like doesn't have because they're not gonna like. Why would they separate the details between true? Um, like what you know, like what people are using it or people that are playing games. Because yes, it is primarily a game thing. But I don't blame people just use it to play Netflix because their TV's old and doesn't have a, it's not a smart TV. Yeah. Actually, I'd probably watch a lot of it on my thing. <laughs> Sony have also announced PS Plus Plays. It's a monthly online in-game competition with money can't buy prizes and an ultimate PAX Australia 2020 <laughs> grand prize. Pulled that straight from the press release. That's because why the hell would I say that? So the monthly games, they've we've got a list of Jan, Feb, and March. So for January, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Mm. February, we have EA Sports FIFA 20. And March, we have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. So I believe that they're going to announce during the months what the what the challenge is. And then you upload to Twitter, I believe. Whatever their socials with the, are. With yeah. the hashtag PS Plus Plays. And you have a chance to win. So it's a really cool concept. So it seems to be Australian based at the moment, which is which is which is rad. So what they do, yeah. So they issue a challenge for the month on on this particular game, and you go in there and you do that challenge. You upload to the socials, and then they go and they'll pick whoever did it best, right? Yeah. Um. And then there are so there's monthly prizes, and then there is a big. So if you if you submit at all. You go in the chance to win a uh, a, a big uh, experience for PAX 2020 in Australia. So PAX Australia 2020 down in, in October uh, for what they've got, essentially just had a big blowout. They've not they haven't said what it is yet, but with PS5 coming out in presumably November, PAX it gone be fucked. And if you can if you can somehow get some cool hands on his shit, you're getting cool hands on shit with PS5. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Like I, I although we <clears throat> talked to PlayStation Australia. I got, I got no specifics, but I promise you there's P- PS5 shit in there. I promise you. It, it's probably worth the time. Yeah. I the, mean, depending how ridiculous these challenges are the, and how good you are at, like, the game. Because like, this is not new for PlayStation Australia. So PlayStation Australia in the past did the, the platinum thing where you could win an actual platinum trophy. I saw one of it. I wanted to touch it. I wasn't allowed to. Um, Did you say they're selling trophy cups now? Oh, I want to buy one so bad. I'm very tempted. Um... But so it's, it's not unprecedented for them to do something like this, which is very, very cool. It's a great way to get people playing and, and to build the socials, which is cool. The difficulty for me is I'm, I am ball bags at games. I'm suck. I'm bum. I got nothing. So it's like, it's like, hey, can you do this challenge? No. It depends on what the challenges are. I don't have any, like for someone that works within the game space, I am asshole at games. <laughs> like you, you're pretty good. So like you'll have a chance. Yeah, but so, so, I'm not playing COD for that. <laughs> no, no you, you, sold, you, you sold it, didn't you? Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah. So I don't have FIFA. I, I'm I'm horrendous at Siege. I've got Siege. Siege is fun. It's a cool idea though. I can't argue that it's not that it's, it's a cool idea. It's a brilliant idea. Are you gonna give it a bell if if it's a game like maybe the later half of the year? Yeah, definitely. If it's if it's in a game that you know that I play regularly, if they chuck a Rocket League challenge in, I'm down for that. Yeah, down for that. But it depends on how ridiculous the challenge is. Yes, true. Um, I don't know whether it's still open as well, but PlayStation Australia, we're also having a competition for a PlayStation Plus party. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, when was that? Like, it's, Yeah, so you, you, you go in there and you answer a series of questions and this little survey, uh, and it was all like, you know, sort of general like trivia for PlayStation, and you go and draw to have this big shindig in, in the Sydney office. Um, I forgot I forgot ended that. I should probably see if that's still going. Maybe we won. I doubt it, but maybe we won. Moving on from news, we have a bit of uh, 
rumor mill stuff. Yes, we're going from facts. We're going from facts to to, to possibly made up shit. Most likely fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to a Russian YouTuber, Anton Logvinov claims the PS5 will rely on upgraded PS4 titles and will launch with no exclusive PS5 titles. All right. Fun fact. This guy Fun fuck fact. is he? <laughs> Fucks this guy. I believe this is the same guy that also uh, revealed that uh, GTA 6 will no, be no, no. Claimed. claimed claimed he didn't reveal shit claimed. claimed the GTA 6 will be a timed PS5 exclusive <laughs> his current only correct claim is that Death Stranding was coming to PC he's also claimed that Horizon Zero Dawn will come to other platforms and going up against an Xbox Series X console with 12 to 16 exclusive titles on day one what the fuck? He's just pulling out his... Like, look, all right, fun <laughs> thing. And look, I'll admit, because I totally forgot it too, they straight up announced it was coming to PC on like Death Stranding way back in the day. Yeah. And I just forgot. So then when they were like, hey, it's coming to PS- PC, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, we told you like six months yeah. ago. It seems absolutely crazy for Sony to launch a new console with no titles no because right now right now it's pretty confident that there like there are first party studios working on something yeah like we don't know anything specific but it's pretty confident that it may in fact be horizon 2 (laughs) we have a possible rumor. what's your stance on what's my stance on it it seems crazy um i would like to think that sony would not launch a console with no exclusive titles i wouldn't rule out that it will launch with some upgraded ps4 of course it will of course it will it just will mm-hmm. like that'd be crazy not to because oh having my child just punched that door <laughs> my kid having a library at minute. the start of a console but like not having a library at the start of a console will kill it yeah you need stuff to play so having upgraded ps4 titles honestly wouldn't bother me as long as there are a few so this here, here is a question here is an issue if this console is as allegedly as backwards compatibility compatible as they're claiming like you know, PS4 and whatever, what, what is the incentive to have these quote-unquote upgraded PS4 games? Well, for, well, take me for example. I still have a very... I have a first-gen PS4. Yeah. So to be able to go and play all my PS4 games in HDR 4K now... I can do that now. Yeah, I can't. That's a good point. Yeah. So for someone like me, this is a big leap. Whereas the leap from PS4 Pro to PS5... If there's no exclusives, it might not be, you know, it might not be all that. So I'm just messing my wife just so much. No, no, that's fine. So but but for me can personally, can you because I don't James have that, that 4K from capability from my from my basic PS4, you know, I would, I'd be more than happy to, to replay some old games in 4K. Like, but what would to, they to, be to though? Like the only thing I could think of potentially would be like if there is Horizon 2, Mm. which is the most with the hot rumor right now uh what do they bring number one and then like make it kind of kind of fancier like what's the deal like because the thing is like a lot of the ps4 games look so dope like what can they do like yeah. what, you know granted there's a lot of butt too but i don't like it's like what could it be like is he talking third party games that get a bump possibly but a lot of the third party you games know, still look amazing it right? doesn't matter because this guy fucking made it up <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and is this look we'll get cuz I have an episode planned probably like a couple couple weeks from now when we don't, we're not reviewing a game talk about GTA 6. That's the plan. I'm it's, so keen for that. It is not fucking exclusive. No, I can't say it. Exclusivity is for is for like I couldn't even see them doing like an exclusive online game mode like Call yeah. of Duty did. Like Exclusivity the only benefit of exclusivity is money. Rockstar Games, they don't need the money. Take two. They don't need the money. Like, aside from... Unless, like, the only way that they're like, we're going to give you an obscene amount of cash. But even then they're like, we make obscene amount of cash. There is no incentive. Yeah, with a company that, that on average makes one game a generation and still doesn't need to make more Now, to make anyway, money, yeah. Like, you know, they're obviously sitting pretty. It's, it's not happening. That's how people talk about the idea of, like, a PlayStation buying Take Two. As an, you know, I'm like, why? Why would Take Two agree to that? They are so financially stable, they never have to worry. 
Mm. Like the only the reason you need to get into it into the first party collective is if you are having some financial risks or concern, or you need some like you. It would it works if or they're offering you a slice of that pie. Yeah, or like the, the, not saying that everyone that is a first party game did it because they were the risk of sh- of shutting down. It's just that you need that security, that safety, like the benefit, like. Mm. You know what I mean? It takes you definitely don't need that. Not even slightly. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Not even slightly. Speaking of studios. Oh, yeah. Uh, possible new studio acquisition. A tweet from a user named at Foxy Games UK. <laughs> Reliable source. <laughs> claims that Sony is on the verge of revealing a major studio acquisition to the world, but no one has substantiated this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go hypothetical here. They're revi- they are revealing a major studio acquisition. Who is it? Who have Sony deemed worthy to bring into their umbrella? The difficulty is it's like looking at who would be kind of who's big enough that would still sell. Because one of the original predictions was Ready at Dawn, and they, there's the guys that did uh, Order Six, Order Eight Ninety Six, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. That's incentive. Uh, they've, they've worked together in the past. But, like, what have they done recently? Sure, like, it wasn't just an old tweet. And, no, no, this, this was right, this before is, this they, is all, right before they got Insomniac. <laughs> this is all freshly new from, from Push Square, my friend. Um, but, so Insomniac's been, been, been pulled. Uh, the other one that the rumor mill was Remedy. It'd be an interesting grab considering yeah how tightly remedy you work with microsoft well that's in the past and that was the idea so that was the idea before that and then control came out didn't do so well well it did it re- critically well but didn't sell well yeah so i think they're whatever they're doing next i think they've even announced they're working closely with microsoft so that's an out and like who like, in terms of the independence like do they make kojima first party uh, do they, you know, like... Oh, yeah, they could do that. I guess it could be Kojima Productions. But, but why announce that? It's like not, even, not even a big achievement. Um, that's another one I had in mind and I've lost it. Oh, the other, the other big independents that are worth buying is like CD Projekt. That's not happening. No. Well, but, they're not... Into, they're publicly, publicly traded anyway. Yeah. Pu- uh, 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 Bungie split off. They're not going to go... They're not going to be locked up by anyone anytime soon. No, not after last time. Yeah, it would have to be some B-level team. And even then, like, what other B-level teams have stuck out so hard that it's worth throwing money at? Like, because it, it's, like, as an example, like, Sucker Punch were purchased, but only after Infamous 2. Mm. So like, they'd already made two games at that point, and they're like, okay, we'll throw some money at you. Like, it doesn't seem to be, like, like, Xbox, have, the studios that they've purchased, they've already had strong relationships with, like, Playground and, uh, uh, do, dead lab no do, dead labs dead labs um you know uh and the other ones is like uh double fine a huge they've got such a pedigree of games it's mm. totally worth like even the ones they picked up recently like ninja theory they have a legacy like the the only kind of quote-unquote b tiers are ones that were already working on second part second party relationships with so I, I can't even think who who's who they're working second party with that they haven't they may do you platinum? have anyone platinum platinum is too huge Platinum just got investment from, from, from Tencent. FromSoft? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, FromSoft would probably be the most likely, like Bloodborne and shit, right? Yeah. But w- why would they do that? Because the, the difficulty is like the logic of... <laughs> yeah. The love of it is cool, but the logic doesn't land. FromSoft is a great pick, though. Great pick. Who would you who would you put? Uh, yeah, FromSoft would be, my, would be my best guess. But yeah, like you said, they're, they're not... You know, they're doing well. I can't see them needing it. Yeah. But that, just because they don't need it doesn't mean they're necessarily not going to do it. But only time will tell, I guess. Yeah. And it, it, it also comes down to what the first party needs, right? Because if you look at the, the scale... Well, like, they, don't, they don't need FromSoft games. They do not need more action-adventure games. Yeah, they, they, don't, they do not need more Sony third-person needs, action Sony adventure. Sony needs to go out and buy themselves some shooters. Yeah, <laughs> where are the shooters at? Who's 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 good shooter company? Like, obviously, the most thing of is Bungie. That's probably the one they probably would think about, but Bungie wouldn't buy it. No. Let us know in those comments below if you, who you think that uh, <clears throat> PlayStation want to pick up. And then they we talk about backwards compatibility. Social media influencer Hip Hop Gamer claims to have corroborated the story with his sources. The next gen system will feature a remastering engine, which he likens to an emulator on a PC. Effectively, 
proposing a scenario where you'll be able to pop in a PS1 disc, fiddle with its resolution, and am- among other settings. Waypoint journalist Patrick Klepek previously said that the system is not just about the future, but also about the past. There have also been various patterns that PlayStation has registered over the years relating to wild backwards compatibility concepts, such as the ability to inject trophies into old code. Oh, you remember this one for about a month. All right, cool. So, <clears throat> backwards compatibility should always be available, <laughs> in my mind. You should not sell us a new piece of hardware that makes everything else we've bought up until then completely obsolete and useless. Oh, there are so many games that I wish I could have played, and I still have discs for, that we should be able to play. Backwards compatibility is awesome. It, it, it instantly increases your library at the launch of a, a launch of a console. Not everyone wants to play new games straight away. Some people are still playing through their old stuff. Uh, my only question is, how are they, especially with the jump between the PS4 games to the PS5 games, how are they going to sell them to us? Because if they're releasing them on both, am I am, is the PS4 games cheaper? Are they gonna? Am I gonna slide the PS4 disc into my PS5 and be like, "Hey man, you're playing on PS5. Would you like to download all the high res patches?" And like, how are they going to market that to us? Well, let's 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 look at it this way. Oh, oh, someone's yelling. That is yelling in chats. That's fine. Um, so. There is some precedence, right? Because like with Xbox, when, when, when the Xbox One X came out, that was a thing that's like, hey, you can download the the the, the extra patches, yep. you know, to get to get whatever, which is cool. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the different SKU thing is going to be a, be a hurdle. Backwards compatibility is. I'm similar with you. I have the stance that um, that it needs to needs to happen. It needs to exist. Yeah. It needs to be on there. Not not. Not necessarily every game. Hey, Craig or Jess, if you're in there, can you help that? Can you help that dude out? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, not every not every game needs to be available backwards compatibility. Like there are some games that will just not work. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it won't work. Hopefully they can work their way around it. Hopefully we get to see a lot of things. Uh, it'll be great if it is disc based and I can just put a disc in because it's, I mean look at you yourself you have such a collection of there's like of six old, games yeah. on that show there's a whole yeah, there's, room yeah there's, yeah. there's you know. <laughs> that's right yeah backwards compatibility mm. definitely needs to be um <laughs> I'm gonna look at it it's alright Craig don't stress <laughs> I'll let I'll let Craig sort that out <laughs> yeah um yeah, so the, the the thing that like, on top of that is like in terms of you just put any disc in, right? It's a really cool idea on paper to be like, how cool would it be if we can put a disc in from any generation and it just happens to work? Like, what is the incentive for that for PlayStation, right? Like, even with Xbox's immense backwards compatibility, it is all, you know, it, it, it is a list that it is curated. Like, yeah. there are games that just don't work. Yeah. So, that's cool. But how is PlayStation going to go through four generations worth of games and make that list? True. And, and, and if they then, like, well, we'll make it... We'll just make it everything. Mm. But then, that seems an incredible amount of work for an almost not much. Like... Backwards compatibility is one of those things that everyone, everyone clamors for. Everyone says it needs to, it needs to be there. I'll use it. I'll use it. But the numbers don't show that. Like if you, if if you look at the, there is information out there of people like, is backwards compatibility being used? Like no, like I think yes, I th- but not. I think the biggest the thing is people, people have what they have and they want to be able to have the option to use it, mm. as opposed to being told no, you can't. That's yeah. That's the point. Like, yeah, the, having the choice is certainly cool because like, obviously you can still pull out your old PS3 and play that PS3 game if you really wanted to. I think some people just like some people don't like being told they can't have something mm. when they feel like they deserve something. Yeah, tournament, right? Yeah. Well, because like saying that, like, I would really like to play Metal Gear Solid One again. No, you don't. You, you have has, that. You have that belief, but you don't. No, I, <laughs> but the problem is, like, I, I, I don't. Like, but. 
that is the biggest difficulty with difficulty with backwards compatibility, right? Is your so you're running games that are running at really low res. Oh yeah, Re- like, like po- the polyg- the early polygonal stuff does not age well, and you want to now put that on four potentially four K televisions. Mm. Like I for a, a stream a while ago, when I went and I played Siphon Filter, game looks like bum. Yeah, I I agree. Like the early polygonal stuff, that's why you know the the sixteen bit games the retro games they hold up well you can you can replay those because their artwork still looks good on a big tv Mm. but when you've got those early polygonal counts and you can literally count the number of it's yeah not good so people have like one or three pointy faces and stuff and i think that that's probably one of the big reasons why there is a resistance it's just like that, like that far backwards compatibility it doesn't look good, and it, mm. and it, and it can obs- like obscure people's memories. True, because even the idea, because even even when you look at games that like, even when Mass Effect Andromeda came out, right? Th- this isn't the other way. This is kind of the other way. But like Andromeda came out, like why didn't they re-release one, two, and three? Because it wouldn't make Andromeda look bad. Because yeah. those first three were so good comparatively. But the same goes the other way as well. Everyone's like, oh, I have such fun memories of these games, and you're like, you can buy it nine bucks on the store you're like cool this game blows <laughs> yeah I've done that a few times well, and I that is part of the games. reason so why, why the classic didn't land it didn't land because A it was way too expensive and, and marketed very poorly but then you boot it up and you're like ooh yeah Tekken 3 did not look good no it didn't <laughs> at all <laughs> did at the time kind of yeah, and that's the big, and that's the big, that's the big difficulty of backwards compatibility. I think it totally should, should, and can be a thing, but it's it is that balancing act that I don't think they've quite nailed yet. Yeah. All right, our PS Plus games for this month are the Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection and Goat Simulator. Charted, what? Yeah, they are throwing us those. Uh, PlayStation hits games lately. It makes sense. Like, it doesn't cost me anything. They're, they're, like, oh, the, the reason a game becomes a classic or a hit is because it's already sold X amount. It's already made its money back. Anything else is just like freaking cherries on top. It's just sprinkles. Not a, you know? not a horrible way to kick off the year. Not the worst. Like Goat Simulator is apparently really fun. Goat Simulator is hilariously fun. Yeah, like physics, those physics games. It's got some crazy... Um, expansions too like crazy expansions yeah. you'd be like a wizard <laughs> this this call of goat <laughs> <laughs> that's weird yeah all right and some quick bits dreams has gone gold yeah. in front of its february 14th release date Ooh, think about th- think about it this way you'd be like hey baby i bought your dreams and i bought your backwards p- backwards paddle <laughs> You're like, you know I love it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn comic looks to be a precursor to a sequel. Uh, fun fact, Jess is like, hey, wasn't that already released already? Yeah, <laughs> it was in the early access beta. <laughs> yeah. That's how uncommon betas are on PS4. Oh, sorry, like early access titles. Everyone's like, isn't that already out? This game is like, as much as it, I've played it and it looks really cool and the concept of it is is brilliant, but... Uh, yeah. I'm no one's gonna it's gonna okay. bomb I have had dreams in my cart since it released in early access on the store can not buy it and now. I Is just it still your cart? and I just no it's disappeared from my cart since yeah. but I just could not pull the trigger yeah look I'll we'll ask we'll know like presumably we'll get we'll get a code and we'll fuck around because I definitely won't be making anything on it I'll play lots yeah, of I'll stuff yeah I'll play everything I don't have the talent to make it work but yeah um but yeah because like they weren't because it was early access there was no codes being given out I'm like well hmm <laughs> uh, please read that second one again because I think you broke Jess's brain yeah so Horizon Zero Dawn comic looks to be a precursor to sequel and she's in the chat wait a how's, how's the comic haven't they been saying be released for the last, last four years yeah Dreams yeah Dreams yeah, has Dreams. been like 10 years in the making but yeah so Horizon Zero Dawn comic uh, apparently it's it's said about this new character and that Aloy goes missing you need to find her that sounds like set up to a sequel if I've ever heard one uh, in the longest reveal ever Warner Bros. Games Montreal have teased a new Batman game again new picture looks like the GCPD badge Capture the Night was the big slogan that was the came big slogan with it. With it came, yeah. And then you shared another picture. Now this is this on the internet as well. It's like this big swirly circle fucking thing. And only two of the two of the nine circles. There is like nineteen in. different fucking circles in that image, and we've been seen 
two. If they, would just, them... if they would just hurry up and tell me what it is so I can pre-order it and get this ball rolling, that yeah. would be fantastic. Yeah, one of them, because one of them, the, what looks to be the GCPD logo. logo. And the, the other, other one, the Court of Owls? No, it's not called, it looks to be the Head of the Dragon, so Ra- Rachel Ghoul's clan. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the big rumor mill for the longest time is Was, this would focus yeah. on the Court of Owls. But it looks like it's bringing up all the all the clans, all the groups within Gotham to sort of come together to stop Batman. I want that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm down for it. <laughs> I still want. Where's, where's my fucking Harry Potter RPG? WB. That's, that's the real question. <laughs> uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake demo leaked. Has, it's not up on the store yet. But they're like, hey, here it is. Someone mined the PSN and found it. Yeah, apparently, if you have a PS4 dev kit, you can play it. <laughs> it's like damn I shouldn't have got rid of mine <laughs> <laughs> damn I knew I should have kept it uh, The Last of Us is the best game of the decade according to Metacritic users I agree with that yeah it's pretty fitting most influential PlayStation game and WWE 2K20 fails to work in 2020 getting stung by the Y2K20 bug <laughs> dude this is the thing <laughs> so for a fucking laugh 2K20, the second that the game registers that it is the year 2020, goes, oh, fuck, and crashes. <laughs> I believe it's been it patched It took since. them eight hours to fix, apparently. Oh, yeah, okay. Apparently, it was, fixed, it, it was fixed on New Year's Day, to my knowledge, and they were like... How? <laughs> how? I, I can't comprehend how that's possible. I mean, is it surprising the game doesn't work anyway? Like, what difference does it make? The if game it's at least functions. <laughs> like, it may be a mess, but it functions. Uh, does it? <laughs> that's, we're aware of it. Is aware of its existence. Uh, well, that brings us. But to, that's it for the news. That, that is it for the news. Let's have a chat to the players, Max, which is you guys watching at home about. Uh, 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 we thought we'd do something different this year. And by something different, I mean completely stolen from our friends over at Player 2. .net.au. <laughs> they have this idea of this video games draft, right? So you, we are able to look at the scope of the year and pick essentially a fantasy video game league team. And the, the collected Metacritic score is your final score of the year. Now, we thought it would be fun to take that choice away from us so we, we put it out to the popsy community on facebook on twitter and all those places to be like give us the games that you want us to have on our teams jess if they release an open world gotham series oh, i'll just pee my pants right now pin now so good um so by yeah by having the choice away from us it would it would force more obscure games to be selected because we could just pick the bangers and yep. be like <laughs> So we put it out to the community. This is a great idea from you to get send it out to the community and let them pick. So we have selected 17 games because it's the 17 that were listed. We, did, we, we didn't put God of War 2 in because that's not happening. So there's no there's nothing to substantiate that. Um, I didn't put NAC 3 on there, but I think I'm going to put NAC 3 back in there. It doesn't matter though because we only have eight things that so we're going to get, get picked anyway. I right? guarantee you I'm not picking NAC 3. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right now that I'm not picking NAC 3. So let's have a look at the list of the games that we were given uh cyberpunk 2077 the last of us part 2 doom eternal resident evil 3 remake final fantasy 7 remake Watch Dogs legion marvel's avengers ghosts of tsushima mlb the show 20 dragon ball kakarot predator hunting grounds persona 5 the royal uh vampire the masquerade i presume bloodlines uh little nightmares 2 dreams Iron Man VR and something called Odd World Soulstorm. Oh yeah. So we are each going to pick eight. Uh, now, one thing we have done is we have chosen team captains. We both discussed this in advance of a t- of a game that we're willing to put as our number one spot because that's the that's our first pick. And they are the first two games on that list. Yeah. So <laughs> you, uh, Ma- so Max's first pick was. Cyberpunk 2077. Why did you make this your team captain? Why did I make this my team captain? Okay, so... I'm pretty sure this is going to be a banger. CD Projekt Red have a tendency of... Well, especially... They don't release games until they're, they're cooked. They they will they will delay the good cooked not the, not the bad Australian <laughs> <Yeah>. cooked. <laughs> they will they will delay it until it until it's done, which is really good. Uh, I believe the source material for this game is going to give players enough 
not just a great experience the first time, but it's going to have high replayability. I think it'll review really well. My only concern for it will be its length. Mm. I think that may be its downfall. Because they've announced how long it is, and it's like 30 hours, hours? Yes, uh, probably longer. Mm. I think 40-ish hours was the golden path. But then, obviously, it's a CD Projekt Red open world RPG. You're probably looking close to like... I mean, if it's anything like The Witcher, you'd be looking at like 100 hours. Mm. Give or take, depending on how quick you are. Pretty valid reason to pick pick your your team captain. <laughs> what about yourself? You have chosen... My team captain is The Last of Us Part 2. Couple of reasons. Now, this, this was... I called you out on this. This is an interesting pick, because you... Have you finished Last of Us Part 1 yet? Yeah. When did you finish like it? Like midway through last year. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, you, someone who's just recently finished the first game, why have you picked number two? Uh, I think number two will be a, a, a big high scorer this year for a number of reasons. Uh, one, having Last of Us 1 be the game of the decade, <laughs> anticipation is high. Oh, yeah. So, and I do think that as it stands right now, even though we are a PlayStation show, PlayStation does get a bump. Yep. There, there is a bump because of the exclusives, right? Nine times out of ten, they get given a, an extra, and a little bit extra because they're normally of a high quality. On top of that, there is also the Naughty Dog bump. Everyone fucking loves Naughty Dog. So even if the game's eh, uh, even if the game's not quite amazing, it'll still probably get reviewed amazingly, right? Yeah. There is a because I've had to try to play the system here. It's all about the Metacritic score. That's true. So it's not about whether we like it or whatever. It's all about the Metacritic. And I think the Metacritic here will be gnarly. I think it'll be very good. However, there is that concern that, like, what if it isn't as good as one? The, expe- the expectations of one are huge. I think it'll, after one, sorry, it'll huge. be interesting to see how it lands with all its emotional set pieces. Yes, because it's obviously finishing. Well, assumedly finishing up a story. Mm. Can it can it do justice to its first part? That's my point. So that there is still a risk here. Like I don't think it's the same risk as like Death Stranding. Like I thought Death Stranding was just gonna get like fucking nineties. Everyone's gonna suck that game's dick. Turns out everyone was like punching that dick. They they had no interest in like chowing down on that. The, the, there was a good hunk of people that really gave it some praise, but then there was enough negative that really skewed it. Yeah. So I think there is still a risk here with with The Last of Us, but I'm pretty. I would highly consider it a lock in. I, I don't have any major queer qu- qu- quarrels is the right word maybe about where this game like this game is probably going to get in the 90s unquestionably I agree so that brings up to our second pick uh, now this, so we are picking these as we go we have no plans about what they're going to be we are picking them on the spot so Max so look, what, looking so, at that do, list do we do we want to well who's picking first should we should we do a I'm giving you well you're giving me first pick I, was th- I thought we were going to do a chance but then I realised I didn't bring a coin into the room Oh, one of the Nuka Cola bottle caps. One of the Nuka Cola bottle caps. Do you want to? So I'm willing to give it to you. Or no, do you wanna, I, th- do I think we should, in all fairness, flip it. Flip a cap. All right. Call it in the air. Uh, I saw how that landed. So that's true. Yeah. Uh, I will go head so that the the Nuka Cola just... side. Tails. Tails. <laughs> all right, cool. Because <laughs> okay. I'll forget and stand on it. Not get really mad. <laughs> Yeah, that would suck. No, that bitch is pointy. Okay, so my my first pick will go to what I thought was going to be my team captain game, and I chose against it. It'll be Final Fantasy VII Remake. Why? I think the nostalgia and the love for this game could carry it through yeah, the agree. Metacritic. The hype around this is like years in the making. I think, but it's, it's I think also it's a double-edged sword. If they don't nail this, oh, so many people can be mad. Yeah. And because it's a a part one of a game, it's going to be very... It's going to be critiqued interestingly, I think. Because it's not a final product. I think that's going to be the... the and I think that might be... If it, if it does poorly, I think that could be the reason why. Yeah, I, I think it will do well. So I think there's enough nostalgia and rose tinted glasses for it to land. Having played it, it's fucking tight. Like, it actually got me interested. Like, I yeah. hate Final Fantasy. 
I really enjoyed playing this. So like I think you're I think there's something there, but because not having that connection to the older game may may change how I think about it. But how the changes that they make, I think will will sway that score. Yeah. So like they've removed that turn based stuff. There is like semi turn based, and it's very this weird sort of because they they did announce a classic mode. Yeah. So I guess it does depend on how you. I still play think I still think you're in with a with a pretty strong pick. So let me just cross this out as we go. Yeah, I think I think you've made the right call there. Okay, and your vice captain game. My oh, vice captain game. Yeah, cool. Uh, Res- I'm gonna keep the remakes going. Resident Evil Three remake. I think that's a really safe. Hit. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think that's I mean, so good. Like Resident Evil Two was such such a ripper. Um, it it played well. It looked well. It was absolutely exceptional. It was like the second I played it last year, I was like, this is gonna be one of my game of the years. And it was, it came, sec- it came third yeah. after Control and then Death Stranding number one. So I was like, if, because by the looks of it, this has been made, uh, the speculation was made in conjunction with two, because I've got to bring them out at the same time. I think this will be on par and that rather than reviewed so well. The difficulty here is apparently they're changing some stuff from yeah, three. Yeah, I heard it wasn't as true to the source material as what two yeah. was. Which won't affect me. I never played three. So I will probably end up loving it. Yeah. However, the, the critic, the critic, the critic, the critical ch- may alter because of it. Yeah. I I think I think it's I think it's a very good pick. Very good pick. I'm going to take Watch Dogs Legion for my third. Interesting. Why? I think this could be the underdog of the year. To be honest, I reckon if they pull this off. It's going to be rad. I liked the first two Watch Dogs games, and the idea that I can play as a crazy grandma is just... I think it, it could get pity points as well. I think I think that, I think that the game could be just fun enough that the critics mm. will, you know, show it some love. Do you, were you aware it doesn't have a release date? I am aware it doesn't have oh, a release date. Oh, and you still made it your and third. I'm still going to pick it. Fuck. I, All right. I think, I think if it does come out this year, we could, um, yeah, I reckon it could go well. That's ballsy, man. Because as it stands, all Ubisoft games are essentially uh, indefinitely delayed. So, yeah, I know. Ooh. I'm going to go for it. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Um, let's take a look at this for me. Ooh, where do I go? Where do I go? Hmm. I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to go with Doom Eternal. Uh, I think the hype alone for this game will will play a very big role. Uh, the Doom 2016 was so fucking good that I have faith in what this will become. However, I make that choice with hesitance. Because I know in part of the the coverage, they've referenced some things that have me concerned. Uh, they talked about having uh, your own hub world. Oh, no. I fucking hate hub worlds. Um, so that instantly makes you go, oh. But knowing that this game, uh, as a result of like Young Bloods and all that, like the backlash, mm. um, they, they, they've, they've delayed it till later in this year. So undetermined date in this year as well. Yeah. Um, kind of makes me go okay saying that also played it tight so good uh, i i think i think it's co- it's core systems if especially if it's being developed on what doom was is going to be so brilliant yeah that i think it's going to deliver um and i think bethesda as a publisher need this more than ever they need this to just go out like to, to, to be so good they like the stake of their company almost is reliant on this game succeeding yeah so I think they're gonna give it what it needs to make it success number four uh, number four for me will be Ghosts of Tsushima uh huh yep uh, similar to your lines uh, you know it, it's gonna I think with it being the last PS4 game to come mm-hmm. out exclusive I think it'll get some love mm. do you think after because like, the, 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 one of the reasons I haven't picked it that I didn't pick it for my first three was 
we have just had Sekiro, a game that's set in the Japanese era, and that game was Gangbusters, game of the year, allegedly. <laughs> um, <laughs> we will also have Neo 2 come out at some point this year. Do you think people will will care or love uh, a, a, a Japanese game, like a, a Japanese thing? What's uh, what aesthetic enough? It depends on the accessibility of the game. Both Sekiro and Neo Two will be quite difficult. Mm. They're not user friendly games, um, and if Ghost of Tsushima comes out as just a a third uh, um, third person action adventure game that's not hardcore I think that'll reach a lot more people than what the likes of Sekiro and Neo 2 did because they are brutally punishing and y- you know they, they would have Sekiro is still one game of the year but they do lose points for people not being able to finish the game yeah. so hopefully if this game is just tight good gameplay that's not overly difficult I think it could be good it's interesting because I think you're kind of spot on there it would make sense for them to not go down that uh, Soulsborne-esque gameplay yeah. especially when you see your two other big hitters that probably would deliver it better anyway like Sucker, Sucker Punch have never done anything like that yeah about some before. but then neither had uh, Respawn when they made uh, Jedi Fallen Order so there's pre- there is possibility that would do it, but when your competition is that, I think they're just gonna make a, a cool uh, Uncharted esque in terms of not yeah. gameplay, not like how, how feel, as in how the game controls, rather than the actual gameplay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. No, you kind of want me over there. Oh, it's getting tough already. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's getting risky because like I've got one like I'm thinking about one but I don't know how it will end all right I'm, I'm just gonna go with it Marvel's Avengers Ooh, I can see you I can see why the hesitancy yeah so having uh when, when they first really announced that game look like butthole <laughs> everyone complained about looking like butthole um when I played it at PAX it was uh late alpha build already looking butthole uh, but it plays good. It's, I mean, the bigger concern of everyone was like the uncanny valley look of the. Yeah. So used to seeing these specific people playing these characters, that when they're not them, it's like, hang on a minute, this isn't this isn't what they're supposed to. But be. when you're playing it, you forget. Yeah. Obviously, when the cutscenes, you go, oh fuck. But <laughs> I, I think yeah, having having played it and having each character play uniquely, I think if they somehow manage to make all the five of them work it'll be a pretty cool game. I think it will... Like, I don't see this going 90s. This is a good 70, 70... I'm going to say 75 Metacritic. So this is kind of a good middle-of-the-run sort of game. Yeah. It's a bold move. It is a bold move. But um, I'm going to go with that. Uh, all right. Oh, jeez. This is getting hard. I will take Persona 5 The Royal. Because we're the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, from memory, Persona 5 did quite well. It did. It, it, yeah, Critically, reviewed very well. Yeah. Reviewed very well. This is this essentially the same thing with a bit of extra stuff. So mm. unless the extra stuff is hot garbage, it should review okay. And seeing that a not, uh, not a lot has changed within that space between then and now in terms of like that, I guess even what Atlas really do like it would make it's not as if there's been the point I'm making is that it's not as if there's been radical competition between yeah. that between then and now for them to be like well why didn't they change this why didn't they do that such and such did it better yeah no I think Fuck, it, that's I a really think, good pick I think it'll still hold up that's a really good pick hmm. uh, I'm gonna go with MLB The Show 20 yep um, because it is the only MLB game out there I think that kind of plays part of it uh, on top of that, uh, because sports Sony, games generally critic, critic yeah they go well. like Sony San Diego, Sony San Diego have consistently delivered a top notch baseball game, and every year it does kind of improve on itself. Mm. Um, I'm sure there's, like, I'm thinking probably 80s if in terms of meta, so I'm positive on that. 
pretty good on that because this year's was really good and I think there's probably more eyes on it now which is positive especially when knowing that it's going to be coming next gen and presumably I think it's 2021 um, and that it was free this year as well on PS Plus I think there's more people looking at it yeah uh, that could be a good thing as in more people will be focusing on it and might see that it's a really good series and they've not played it before or more people that don't know how it works reviewing it going, <laughs> and going poorly uh, it's, I'm pretty confident in MLB I think they will do it right okay don't forget to cross up oh, we're getting in the weeds now yeah okay so my next pick can I is either going to make or break my list I think is it even on there yeah it is I'm going to take Iron Man VR hey nice one now if this makes anyone chunder is it going to suck is it going <laughs> to review really bad but if they can pull off the I'm Iron Man feel it's it's well, if, it, if it's score. anything like Easy all the score. Batman reviews, we're like, this game makes you feel like Batman. <laughs> yeah. And everyone said that. So if, they, if this people like, if, if we can get reviews like, this made me feel like Iron Man and I didn't vomit in my mask. <laughs> like, yeah. that's going to be a positive. Yeah. Like, and they're, they're confident. Like, it was, once again, playable. I was playable at PAX. Um, friend of the show, Buddy Watson, gave it many praise. Yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a bit of a VR aficionado, though, so I don't think he ha- I think he has the, the VR legs. Yeah. So he won't... He, he's not prone to, to, to puking. Um, I think he made a good pick. Right. See, VR games are always really dicey picks. They can either... But there's never been a high-scoring VR game. True. So, yes, I think... But yeah. there have been horrendously low ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that really has. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go with Little Nightmares too. Ooh. Uh, this is a risky one because I don't think I don't know when it's coming out this year. Um, but I think because this this was kind of a little indie indie darling from uh yeah last year the year before. So I think it, I think because of that it'll have a bit of love, and I think it's got enough. It had a, such a unique charm to it that I think they can only improve on it. Yeah, for the second one, so I think it will will uh, re- receive well because of it. I'm going to take Dragon Ball Kakarot. Hey, <laughs> yep. um, it's coming out next week, so that's good. Good sign it means I'm going to get some points. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <yeah, that's true. laughs> um, what was it that we saw? A uh, 40 hour campaign. So it looks like it's meaty. Looks like it's got a bit of content. Yes, a new, a new trailer drop this week. Look pretty tight. Yeah, hopefully the gameplay is good and hopefully it reviews well. So that's the other thing with anime games <laughs> anime is that games. they've always been po- they've always been poor. Yeah, it, de- it does depend on who's reviewing them. If they if they don't have, you can tell the people that have the love for the anime versus the people who are just playing the game to mm. do the review. So hopefully we get some skewed numbers. Well, because you and I are both going to play this ahead of next week for our re- for review. So, like I I have love for it when I was in my single digits because I used to watch it before I went to school and whatnot. Yep. But it hasn't grown with me. The love hasn't grown with me. Like, yeah. I haven't gone back and watched any Dragon Ball or anything. Um, so even so I, watched, so I watched Dragon Ball Super. Yes. Watched all the new movies. Yeah, I think you, then you, didn't you watch Kai when it dropped as well? Yeah, I have not liked it. I have not liked a Dragon Ball Z game since the Wii version of Tenkaichi 3. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. See, I had the same we'll thing. I'm like, man, no game's ever going to be as good as Budokai Tenkaichi 3 or <laughs> two, 2 or whatever it was. And I played someone. This game's balls. Yeah. So it's like, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, Dragon Ball Fighters, I put some time in. Fighters was good. I'm really bad at fighting games. I am so bad at fighting games. Yeah. I used to be good. Not anymore. <laughs> One, did not have that reaction time anymore. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Do it. Pick dreams. <laughs> I can't. I can't. It's predator hunting grounds. Ah, you bastard. <laughs> This is going to review so poorly. I have a feeling it's going to review really poorly. Well, from memory, uh, Friday the 13th reviewed very poorly because the game didn't work. Yeah. So hopefully the game works. So hopefully there's a bit more, a bit of time has come with that. And as a result, they'll uh, improve it. Uh, hopefully they agree- they spoke to the license holder <laughs> before they release this game. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got two left. Uh, three left. You've got Vampire the Masquerade, Dreams, oh, and Oddworld. Oh, that's right. Someone's getting left out. Oh. I'm going to take Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. All right. Nice. 
Cool classic. Yep, I, I'm actually a kind of a huge fan of the Vampire the Masquerade tabletop I don't know game. how to spell something going to do that. <laughs> Vamp, Vamp Mask. Uh, yeah, this will definitely be either a cult hit or fly completely under the radar. Well, because the, the old one didn't do do well. No, they do not. They also did not age well. <laughs> I I watched uh, GD, AGDQ's running at the moment. I watched a Vampire the Masquerade speedrun the other night. And it looks garbage, and the game only came out in 2006. <laughs> <laughs> but I have seen this one. It does look really good, and hopefully, um, hopefully it is good. Hopefully, mm. it, yeah. Hopefully, it wins some hearts. And doesn't suck. Pun intended. And doesn't suck. Yeah, but I think it will do better than the other two games that are on that list. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna bite the bullet. You gonna take dreams? I take dreams. Man, Look. what happens if Dreams is like secretly a banger and everyone loves it? Yeah, then that's points for me, brother. Like, I really don't think this game's gonna. Like, I think. How do you review a game? Because uh, I. The it's it, creation I know, tool? I know that it has a campaign created by Media Molecule. Media Molecule, yes. right? But how do you. Yeah, how do you critique a game that is in itself designed to make games? Well, it's, it, I guess it's all about the input, in, uh, implementation. So, like when we review it, because we will be, um, it'll be how how does it implement this cre- these creative tools? Like, cause from the looks of what we've seen, the scope and potential of Dreams uh, as a game making platform is pretty impressive. Yeah, but how does it deliver that? Like, do I have to be some sort of like astrophysicist to be able to like, make it work? Yeah, what's the ease of use? What's yeah, like, the- can I deliver on it? And I think that'll be the big de- the big decider and how it works. Because I think most people that We'll, we'll, we'll play it we'll probably play it not create stuff but then there'll be like good hand people just kind of rip through it and just make the best stuff um, my concern is copyright infringement oh it's all copyright infringement yeah every single story I've heard about dreams is someone's recreated the Final Fantasy 7 demo cool like, <laughs> awesome <laughs> someone made Zelda <laughs> I'm like okay awesome cool, cool. can you something cool and, and new but that doesn't cool and doesn't bring clicks <laughs> no. nostalgia does all right, so that does. So we do have our eight uh, games each. Um, let's have a quick look. So we'll go through my mine first because it's the top of the page. Uh, these are my eight games: The Last of Us Part Two, Resident Evil Three Remake, Doom Eternal, Marvel's Avengers, MLB The Show Twenty, Little Nightmares Two, Predator Hunting Grounds, and Dreams. Uh, I'm really confident on the, my first five. <laughs> um, I think they will do well, but I think I might come out okay. Yeah. Max, Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Watch Dogs Legion, Ghosts of Tsushima, I can never pronounce it correctly, Persona 5 The Royal, Iron Man VR, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I'm super happy with all of, uh, with most of my picks. The only two that are really super concerning me right now is Watch Dogs, because, <laughs> you know, if it doesn't come out, it's real awkward, and Iron Man VR. The VR game is you know, very hit or miss. I'm, I'm, I think your list is pretty good. Because even I'm if, happy with my, I'm happy with because my even list. if you ca- like, I think you may have the the power of averages. <laughs> yeah. Like, I because a couple of mine are risky, and I think they could really bring the average down. But you, I think you you have the most probably consistent. Mm. So even if even if they all come out of like seventies or eighties or whatever, you you still at, c- accumulatively come up better. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, let us know what your picks would be for this year if you were to create your own uh, fantasy draft of, of games. Let us know in the comments below, Facebook group, all that sort of stuff. Definitely Knack 3. Def- uh, yeah, Definitely. Knack 3. We, we should put Knack 3 on that list, but like once again, who fucking knows? <laughs> but these are all games that are coming out way down the line, Max. Let's close out the show like we always do. The section we call coming to the players where we tell you about what games that are coming out this week. Uh, Josh, so, you, it's yep. all you now. So the drop, the new PlayStation games for January 4th, the week of January 14th, 2020. Bear in mind, this is a US blog post. Not all of them may come out to us. They may not also come out on the dates provided here. But let's have a look. All right, we have Atelier Dusk Trilogy Deluxe Pack PS4 Digital. So you get nice, nice three set of Atelier games. And you can also pick them up separately 
also digitally for the PS4. So we have Atelier Aisha, The Alchemist of Dusk DX. So I'm glad you're in this because I'm like, Atelier Esh. Uh, Atelier Esha and Lugi, Alchemist of the Dusk Sky DX. And Atelier Shali, Alchemist of the Dusk Sea DX. What kind of like. Is it DX as in like, you know, fucking Degeneration X? No. If you weren't down with D- these three games, I got two, I got three words for you. Probably Deluxe. Yeah, yeah. I wish it was more about DX, though. Because <laughs> I got two words for you. Uh, we have Darwin Project, PS4 now, Digital. You brought this up earlier, so read, read out the description for so me. So Darwin Project is an outdoor futuristic battle royale style deathmatch oh. with a strong emphasis on hunting, trapping, and survival. Not only will you be pitted against fierce rivals, but you'll compete for the favor of an ill-seeing show director. <laughs> Sorry, in the chat. Now that's here from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've played Darwin Project. I played an early access uh, version of this on, on Steam. Um, when when Battle Royales were all the rage and that's all I was playing. I I warmed to this game due to the show directedness of you can, you can control the battlefield as opposed to being a player mm. so you can be like I'm going to set a fire here lightning strike's going to go over here I'm going to drop some ammo over here for this person and then there's viewers so basically it's it's hunger games because there's viewers and you can like someone likes you they can airdrop you in some health or some ammo or some and it was it was cool but you know I don't think it's going to beat out any of the other yeah the second you say royal, battle royal I'm just like <laughs> battle royal I'm out we have a Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, PS4 Digital, and Physical out this coming Friday, the 17th, I believe. Mm-hmm. Read out that description for that bad boy. Relive the story of Goku and the other Z fighters in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Beyond the epic battles, experience life in the Dragon Ball Z world as you fight, fish, eat, and train with Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, and others. Explore the new areas and adventures as you advance through the story from powerful bonds with other heroes from the Dragon Ball Z universe. So it's like, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and the others. <laughs> yeah, you know, those guys die <laughs> millions of times. Yeah, so uh, we will be we'll be getting hands on that. I have already spoken to Bandai Namco, and it is on the way. Uh, when we get it, I don't know, but the ideally is that will be our uh, next next week. That will be our, our main topic because we'll be reviewing the game. We also have Eclipse Edge of Light PSVR PS4 Digital. Crash landed on a sentient planet. You awake? Just pick your interest. Yeah, it's just, you know, VR stuff. Crash landed on a sentinel planet. You awake, awake to discover a dreamscape world filled with alien wonder and the remains of a betrayed civilization. You find a powerful relic that can interact with ancient technology and grant you near magic powers. Can you rise to the challenge and solve the haunting riddle of this mysterious place? Gravity Error. PS4 Digital out 15th. Hardcore Mecha. PS4 Digital. No release date on that one. Oh, if, if it doesn't say the date, presume it's Tuesday. Presume it's Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, My Tetsu Pure Station. PS4 Digital out on the 16th. Yeah, because I could, I could pronounce that. I couldn't have. It looks like an anime girl standing at a train station. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bow PS4 PS Vita Digital Cross Buy. Why is that nun pushing a butt out? <laughs> Seek Hearts, PS4 Digital. The amount of weeb shit that comes out everywhere. A Super so Mega bizarre. Space Blaster Special Turbo, PS4 Digital. Track Mayhem, PS4 Digital. Without Escape, PS4 and PS Vita Digital Cross Buy. Uh, that's it. So the big one this week is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I yeah, guess. everything else seems like a bumhole. Uh, a lot of lot of um a lot of filler it's interesting though because like we've had no drop for the last three weeks presumably no games dropping or no one was doing it i think some games came out like australian open tennis came out yesterday <laughs> before AO tennis yeah yeah lots of it seems to be lots of like jrpg styled games mm. and yeah very slow week by the look of it yeah that's right we'll start picking up later give me time to play finish horizon start yeah. from scratch again <laughs> have fun with that yeah. so thank you Max for kicking off this year as first official co-host how'd you feel are you happy about it you yeah not too bad yeah I think I fucking nailed it awesome <laughs> this is where Josh does a segue that you get to do oh the segue yeah the wrap up I don't know that you just kick it off I have to kick it off yeah so this PlayStation conversation happened 
on a Monday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services of choice, 9 a.m. on the YouTubes, and live on a Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. That's right. <laughs> That's pretty much it. If you want to join that PlayStation conversation, head over to uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash group slash the pop cultures, Twitter, Discord, Instagram. All those links are in the description below. If you want to support us with some dollary dues, head over to patreon.com slash the pop cultures. No real incentives or rewards. It's just if you feel like being kind. Uh, and the other, uh, if you want to support us in a more one off fashion, head over to uh, popcultures.com slash shopping by shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. Uh, if you are listening to us on your podcast service, just be sure to give us uh, a star rating maybe a review tell your friends get us out there help people listen it's very very cool stuff uh, and then we are also on a Twitch as you're watching it right now uh, twitch.tv slash the Bob Culturist where we do stream this show recording live as as Max said Saturday 4pm Australian Eastern Time and we do also stream the games that is every Thursday at 8pm Australian Eastern Time uh, this week I presumably we're playing Dragon Ball if, not, yeah. if, if, if if we get hands on it prior if not we'll uh, be playing tools up yeah that's the plan at this point but until next week I'm Ryan Betson I'm Max Cooper and that was for the players For the players, the Pop Culturist PlayStation Podcast is fan-supported at patreon.com slash thepopculturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders, Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers, AJ Abatomi, Damien Holdies, Carl Dunn, Lee Winterchauvin, Nathan Massetti, Paul James, Pure Mongrel, and Sean Levitt.